serious crime is very rare in the national parks, but it does happen. Um, and they get this wide variety of crimes. So from the occasional homicide, kidnapping, sexual abuse, um, there's poaching, drug trafficking. All of the vices that can be found in American society eventually can be found within the national park system, even though we might not like to think that is the case. And that's the reality, right? Well, one of the agents said that criminals take vacations too. <laughs> <laughs> National parks are incredibly safe places, but when you have millions of visitors coming through every year, crime will happen. The idea behind Wild Crime was to tell the stories of Park Service investigators, whose jobs are very different from those of traditional detectives. In a National Park Service, your crime scene could be on top of a cliff, at the bottom of a river. Um, so it's a very different world, and they're very different, very rugged, and very individualistic people. So uh, that in itself was intriguing. One of the, the first cases that popped up that caught our eye was this case about Harold Henthorne, who was a gentleman who, well, come to find out, he pushed his wife, his second wife, off a cliff in Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, of course, the case didn't start out that way. It started with the 911 call. Hi, my mom, what's the address, the emergency? My name is Harold Hithorn. I'm in the Rocky Mountain National Park. My wife had fallen. She's in really critical condition. I need a rescue team immediately. I was told to go to Deer Ridge Trailhead. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. A lot of things here don't add up. To tell the story, Wolfinger and her crew spent six weeks in Colorado on what was an unusually challenging shoot. We were dealing with not only the pandemic, so dealing, living through COVID protocols every day, doing everything in a mask, interviewing people in a mask, um, climbing mountains in masks, um, but also the forest fires. Uh, Colorado was essentially on fire that September. So Which must have been a problem for you because you wanted to portray the beauty of a national park, I imagine, and if the sky is hazy and gray and smoky, it doesn't work, does it? Oh my gosh, we'd wake up every morning and there'd be this smoke haze covering everything, and we were despairing. So we were just counting, you know, having those little breaks in the, in the smoke haze so we could get up to the park and shoot some spectacular scenics, but it was tough, it was tough. Two of Lisa Wolfinger's sons worked on the shoot, one as director of photography, the other as an associate producer. So we all end up in Colorado together living in a hotel for six weeks. I mean, on the one hand, it was lovely to be working with my sons. I mean, how wonderful. Um, on the other hand, they did, especially on weekends, treat me as mom. Uh, so I ended up doing their laundry every weekend, which, uh, you know, if I stop and think about it, I was the director. Why am I doing the director of photography and the associate producer's laundry? <laughs> Wasn't really in your job description, was it? <laughs> not really, not really. <laughs> the series does contain recreation and you ended up shooting a fair number of those recreations here in Maine, correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, because of the, the pandemic, we really had to shoot all of that in our backyard, which worked out beautifully. Who knew Maine could pass for Colorado? <laughs> And in fact, we used all our friends and neighbors because again, we couldn't really, you know, we, we, had to, we had to use the people who are in our bubble as much as possible, in our COVID bubble. There's a lengthy history of crimes that have been committed in national parks. Is this a series that you can keep going? Do you envision more storytelling? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're, you know, we're working closely with the ISB, the Investigative Services Branch, and they've opened their case files to us. Um, and we have some really interesting cases coming up for season two and hopefully three, four or five, you know, as, as long as we can keep it going.